hackers. Yeah, and they, they always just ruin your day. <laughs> What's good? Oh. Okay, bro. Welcome Read. to story time with lunch 15. <laughs> the fire started inside a barn. It was tiny at first, a glowing dot, some wisps and white smokes. But then the flames reached up. They grabbed hold of a pile of hay. Crackle! Bop! And boom! That was the first shot of rain and fire bunching through the roof, raging for the sky. Voices screamed out, FIRE! There's a fire! <laughs> Alarm bells ring! Oh, I got that off. Wait, up. <laughs> Rip, sweet prince. Um. <laughs> But it was too late! The flames blasted a shower of fury sparks and the windy sky like a swarm of flaming wasps! They flew through the streets, starting fires wherever they wanted! Shops and homes erupted in flames, warehouses exploded, mansions burned to the ground! Crowds of panicked people fled their homes and rushed through the streets along the wooden sidewalks where they would burn to their death! This, they screamed and pushed and knocked one another down, desperate to get away from the choking smoke and broiling flames. But there was no escape. The wind blew harder. Flames shot up. We got hundreds of feet in the air, spreading across for miles and miles and into the middle of what was an 11 year old birthday. Oscar Starling was having the day of his life. And then. Oscar had never felt so terrified. Not even two <laughs> years ago when they had a killer blizzard with his family in the Minnesota farm. And he was trapped inside a burning building, fighting for his life. Had he made it to the stairs, desperate to escape, crash! a ball of fire and cinders crashed through the window, and the house exclaimed, and suddenly Oscar was the first in the... Wait, what? <laughs> Oscar was in the fire's ferocious grip. The flames clawed at him. What's that word? Um. <laughs> when you can't read. <laughs> oh, pff, that's a see. See him threw him to the ground. Smoke gushed up his nose and into his no! nostrils. But the worst was the blistering hate. The feeling of being roasted alive. Was this the end? Oscar had never. And now he was sure he was going to die. That was the next story. Wait, next story? Yeah, do the next one. <clears throat> you mean... Wait, you mean you want me to do the other stories, too? Yeah, dude. <laughs> okay, I'll do the tornado one again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> one second, I, I gotta chug a gallon of water. Oh, <laughs> I just chugged some water. <clears throat> no, I'm still reading. <laughs> oh, shut up. Shut up, little child. <laughs> he needs to chug a gallon of water first. <clears throat> Sunday, May 22nd, 2011, 5.42 p.m. Joplin. when you were born? What? <laughs> Is that when you were born? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> A monster EF5 tornado. <coughs> I need to check some more water. <laughs> Are they just watching you play Skywars and hearing me scream in the background? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, and his older brother's a Navy SEAL. Good for him. His older brother's a Navy SEAL. That's cool. <clears throat> A monster year five tornado was destroying the city of Joplin, Missouri. And then an 11-year-old Dexter James was in its killer grip. The tornado had snuck up on the city, hiding behind a wall of storm clouds. Few knew it was coming, and nobody imagined that within minutes it would kill 158 people and destroy much of the city. <coughs> <coughs> in the hours before, Joplin had hummed with happy life. Tears rose up from the little league fields. Garden bloomed with roses and wild strawberries. Churches echoed with prayers and hymns. It was a typical Sunday afternoon. 
until the day turned dark and the wind began to howl. <clears throat> What's that in the background? I'm out of here. <laughs> and the sky exploded like a bomb! Oh my god! And it was three quarters of a mile wide! With winds that top 200 miles per hour! It swept away <laughs> homes and blasted the wreckage thousands of feet into the sky! It tore apart the schools and sent <laughs> stars crashing down on them able to. Then two missiles <laughs> trucks were hurled in the air, just <laughs> like they were atomic bombs. Century-old trees were ripped from the ground. The tornado sirens wailed. People rushed into their basements, huddled in their bathtubs as the house collapsed on top of them. Parents gripped their children as cruel winds tried to tear them away in minutes. The entire neighborhood lay to ruin. Dexter was in a sports utility vehicle when the tornado hit, aka an SUV, <clears throat> and he was now trapped. The ferocious wind roared and sent tree limbs and rocks smashing against the SUV. And it smashed! A window shattered. A tornado's fury blasted into the SUV. Dex was attacked by swirling winds filled with bits of wood and metal glass, just like shrapnel. <laughs> the pain was like being stung by thousands of sun scorpions. Over and over again. And then the wind grabbed hold of Dex. It wrapped around him like an invisible tentacles from an octopus trying to eat him, pulling him towards the open window. Dex has always wanted to see a tornado for real. Now he regrets ever having that feeling. And now here he was, <laughs> the evil swirling in the dark. Dex was being sucked into the tornado. But there was no way he could escape. Good job. That was that Want me to read the last one? I like I like this last one. I say that for yeah, last. Read the last one. Because it's the book. No, you, you can put ads in the you know. Which means that you can just add ads. That's good. More. <clears throat> and we're going to walk off the cliff. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I just fell into the void. You're good. <clears throat> Beggars don't beat you. They are. <laughs> now you can call it Skywars. You can call it Skywars plus story time with lunch fifteen. This is about the Battle of Gettysburg. Oh, okay. <clears throat> no, Maggie Mango should really put this as his background instead of the music. Exactly. <laughs> July second, eighteen sixty three, a battlefield in Gettysburg. It was the Battle of Gettysburg, the biggest and bloodiest of the Civil War. Mighty armies from the United South and the uh, in the Rebel North. <laughs> That's backwards. Um, <laughs> mighty armies from the United States, North and South, were fighting to the death. Cannon shook the ground and set sky on fires. Bullets flew through the air like deadly shrapnels. And in the middle of it all, stood an eleven-year-old. Awesome. Just three weeks before, Thomas had been a slave living on a farm in Virginia. Now he was on the battlefield of Pennsylvania, trying to help the northern soldiers who were fighting so he could be free. Thomas had come to bring the men more ammunition for the rifle. He had to get away from here. He needed to get his little sister, who was waiting where I was safe. But then a huge cannonball came sailing through the air and crashed into the ammunition wagon. Kaboom! Flames shot up. Three branches turned into torches. Razor sharp stress of metal, the nails flew through the air, stabbing Thomas in the leg and cutting his forehead in half. He dove for the corner, rolling down a slippery hill. Gun smoke filled the air, choking him, blinding him. He had to get away. He staggered across the field, coughing and gagging. Blood spilled from his eyes and from the gash of his forehead and gushed from the cut on his leg. And through the blood and smoke was a terrifying sight. Hundreds of rebel soldiers. Charging across the metal, the rifle pointed right at him. Boom, boom, it's a boom! Thomas ran, but not fast enough. He turned and saw a rebel soldier running straight for him. The soldier's eye was red with fury. His face was twisted into a crazy grin. He aimed his rifle at Thomas. No, Thomas here. Kaboom! That seemed to shatter like glass. He jerked back and fell into the blood-soaked grass. Thank you for listening to this episode. Story time with Lunch 15.